Hello, this is Joanne Marie Rumford, and I'm doing this video on my apartment in Port Your, Michigan. Tonight is uh, um, Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is because um, I read a New York Times article this week. Um, I read the headlines, I didn't read the whole thing yet, but it is uh, titled. I have to go to the website here. Take take a look at it. Um, it's it, the title of it is "Did a meteor explode over New Hampshire that may explain the boom?" And it's by New York Times reporter Neil Vigdor, and it stated October twelfth, two thousand twenty-one. Um. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because back in 1981, my late husband and I signed uh, our mortgage papers for our first house together on uh, April Fool's Day. It was uh, April 1st, 1981 in Clearwater, Florida at Countryside Estate. And one night, and I'm, I'm trying to think it was 81, it had to be 81. Um, because his brother and his sister-in-law moved in next door to us soon afterward. Um, and uh, one night, uh, there was a loud boom. Uh, and my late husband and I went out the house, and so did his brother and his sister-in-law from their house. And we looked up in the sky, and I said to my sister-in-law, where's the stars? Where's, where's the moon? I mean, Clearwater, Florida, I know it's something to do with sea level, so maybe that's why I couldn't see the stars. But when I heard the boom, we all thought, well, what was it? And reading that New York Times or seeing the headlines about the meteor, it could be a meteor in New Hampshire, the, the big boom. Maybe that was what it was back in Florida, back in 1981. But then again, Clearwater's not that far from the Kennedy Space Center. Um, and uh, I guess not as far, but I guess would you be able to hear that from all the way from there regarding something a spatial or something? But um, I'm not can't remember exactly when the spatial program started, but uh, uh, they um, could have been it could have been like a gas explosion or something, something natural, something man-made. Uh, but if it was a meteor, a meteor, we don't know. And um, uh, there was a movie that was a Clint Eastwood movie back in uh, 1982. And this happened before the movie because I didn't see the movie until at, later. I'm trying to think. I can't remember exactly when I seen the movie. But it reminded me uh, before I seen the movie, I, I was thinking that was there a pilot that was coming through the the uh, sky uh, from another country like Soviet Union or something um, and they were defecting. I was even thinking back then was it Prince Charles that got a jet to leave England you know um, trying to think when she the first the, the exact date he married Princess Diana but I think it was um, not it was soon it was it was around the time we moved to it moved into our house in Clearwater Florida that Prince Charles got married to Princess Diana so I was thinking of that, you know, I was thinking, well, it had to be before he got married to her. Um, but then again, um, I'm not sure exactly the date that they got married. But anyways, going back to the story about the big boom in Florida, um, you know, I was thinking back then that uh, it was uh, a pilot uh, that came across the sky. You know, the sound is sound of, uh, faster than the speed of light or something, uh, a, a sonic boom or something. So, um uh, that's why I'm doing this video because I'm thinking maybe somebody will contact me and to let me know what that boom was because we, my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law and my husband, we didn't know what that sound came from and it wasn't in the paper the next day. Um, back in the 1950s, 1960s, because uh, back in the 60s, um, uh, I was born in 1954, so the uh, movies back in the 50s uh, I seen later on as reruns. So a lot of the outer space movies um, were, um, uh, you know, uh, 
regarding, you know, UFOs back then. It was a big thing in the 60s, um, sightings, UFO sightings. So um, anyways, uh, whatever that boom was in New Hampshire, the, you know, that the New York Times reported on, um, I guess they don't know. So um, they may never find out. Um, I uh, uh, believe that... Um, uh, you know, we, we're not told exactly what's going on, you know, as far as seeing things in the sky. I mean, they're coming out now with uh, more information about the UFO program, about the um, uh, Blue Book or whatever they called it. Um, uh, and I had an experience uh, with my mom when we were in, in Ireland driving. I was driving on the left side of the road. It was around uh, on the way to Kilkenny and we we're by the uh, President Kennedy Memorial Park, President Kennedy, and uh, we were driving down the two-lane road, and there was a land above, above um, the road, um, and a cow came out over and jumped over it because I had seen. Uh, I was on the left side, Mom was on the right, so I had seen the cow coming over. He was in mid. It, it was in midair. So I told Mom. Um, close your eyes. I'm going to have to break. You know, we didn't have seatbelts. This, you know, we didn't have seatbelts. And this is 1980. So I told mom, close your eyes. I'm going to break real fast. So she closed her eyes. I closed my eyes. I break, I break the car. I put the brakes on. And uh, then we opened our eyes. And then this cow was walking ahead of us on the road right in front of us and a little bit ahead of us. I got out and took his picture with my camera because nobody would have believed that it came in uh, uh, through the sky, right through the midair. Mom didn't see it. I did because it was the vantage point was where I was sitting. So um, I got out and I went to the to where I thought next to our car, the the where the road was higher, uh, the land was higher it was a stone wall, and I looked over and there's a bunch of cows grazing and uh on grass and uh it had to be it had to be the cow that jumped over it right so for it that came from so i took a picture of that but i don't have the picture of the cow anymore i got i just got the picture of the land where the cows are and the cows were facing um let's see we're driving that way and the cows were facing towards us so they were facing towards us so um uh, cause they, when we're, I could, I could remember that because when, when I got out to take the picture of the cow and then I went up to take a picture of the land above, I peeked over, I couldn't even, I just had a uh, tiptoe or whatever uh, up on the, <coughs> from the road, the brick, wall, the stone wall, it was a stone wall. And I remember where the cows were facing. So it was facing opposite from where we were driving. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyways, that's the story of the cows and the UFO. I don't know. It, it's like having a UFO experience, you know, seeing that cow in the air. So, you know, and then telling my mom beforehand, uh, close your eyes real quick. I'm going to break the car, put the brakes on. And it was just a split second. And uh, and we opened our eyes, I guess, at the same time because I looked over at mom and her eyes were, was just opening or whatever. And I thought, well, then she had her eyes closed and I had my eyes closed. and. And um, I didn't know exactly how long I should keep my eyes closed. I was thinking that we were going to go right through the windshield because the road was about 25 miles an hour. So, we, you know, 25 miles an hour is pretty fast, you know. Um, and uh, there's nobody around. Um, and um, thank God we, we didn't get, we didn't hit the cow. You know, that would have been terrible. You know, it would have been terrible because the expense of having to fix the car later, you know, because it was a rental. It cost me five hundred dollars at um, Shannon Airport at, there at the um, uh, that I rented it at, uh, and it, they were given to give me a uh, stick shift. I never drove a stick shift before. I I didn't know how, and I told them that, and so they gave me an automatic, and they said it would be hundred dollars more. So it cost me five hundred dollars to rent the car, and we we were in Ireland for two weeks prior. I was in England, and. Um, then flew over from England. I was there with my mom's brothers uh, for two weeks, uh, to, for one week in uh, 1980. 
in the fall of 1980, and then I flew to our to Ireland to to um, uh, Dublin, and then I met Mom the next morning at the airport because I I stayed at Drummond Castle that night by myself, which was another weird experience because I was in bed, and all of a sudden the window was open, like you know the window was open in the um on the right side of the where the bed was. So um, there's two beds, so the right side of the bed. So uh, it's one of those windows, like a castle, you know, windows. And uh, all of a sudden the door opened up and scared the daylights out of me. Um, I don't know what, what why it would open. It, would, it had, it had to be wind coming through the window, and, but if it was wind coming out the window, then the door would open going out to the hallway, but the door, when you open it, it comes into the bedroom. So. Um, it, it just being there in the castle and then, you know, then alone that night. And then my mom coming the next morning, I had to meet her at the airport. So I ended up getting in the rental car and <laughs> I got lost and, uh, the signs were pointing everywhere, you know? And so I stopped by this, uh, little thatched, um, cottage house. And a young man answered the door. It was real early in the morning because the the employee at the at the uh, castle had to come out and help me start the car because my car was the car wasn't starting. He got it started for me, so I took off from the castle and then I uh, got lost on the way to the airport because it was blackout, dark, pitch black. I couldn't see. It was early morning, and I stopped by and I woke this young man up and he. I said to him. <laughs> Standing there at the doorway, I said, you know, I, I'm lost. Can you just point me which way to go on the road to the airport? And he, he told me, and I got I went that way. I was, I don't know, I can't remember if it was going the right way or not, but I got back in the car and said, thank God, may, I hope I get there, you know. So um, thank goodness for uh, someone that, you know, helped me out with that. And I don't even think he knew I was American, uh, you know, or maybe I didn't tell him or I didn't, I was from another country, but. He probably knew right away when I was talking to him my accent, or you know, to them, to the Irish, we got accents. So, anyways, thank God that he got get, told me the right direction because it was like one way, one way or the other. So he's pointing the right direction. So I got to the airport and got mom, and then we stayed that night at the castle, and then we took off then for the tour of the sub, southern part of Ireland up to Dublin to uh, meet her, my mom's uh, brother and sister. And uh, they live in Dublin, Ireland. So, uh, but that cow uh, flying overhead, I couldn't believe it. I just thought, oh, this is this is not real, you know. I somebody had said something, a comment I made that to the New York Times article, a comment I made, uh, and somebody said uh, it could be a Monty Monty Pi, Python movie, you know, and I. I went, I never seen that movie. I think that was back in the 1970s. And I watched it after he, the, the person made a comment about my comment. Um, and, and, and uh, I watched the movie later and I said to myself, that, that looks like the cow that was flying in the air. You know, I, I had never seen that movie Monty Python before. So, um, but that boom down in Florida in 1981, I'm thinking it's 1981 because it was soon after we we bought the house um, and that had happened. So, and my brother-in-law and his wife moved in next door to us not too soon after we moved into our house. So, um, but we weren't there that long in, in Florida. I moved back, we separated, my husband and I, and uh, I never, uh, uh, after, um, you know, we were married in 1977 in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, we I met him when I was 19 in 1973. So in 1977, in Mother's Day, May 8th, 1977, on a Sunday, we got married, and his brother that moved and his wife that moved to Florida next door to us, they were the ones that, that he, his brother was the groom and his, uh, his wife was my maid of honor. So it was just two of us and his family, his mom and the aunt, and his brother and his sister-in-law and me and him flew to Las Vegas. And that was 1977. Uh, and we got married on May 8th, 1977. Uh, and, uh, but when we moved to Florida, that was the last time I traveled for quite a while. Um, uh, we didn't travel when we bought our house there. Um, and we were only there for, I was there till um, I moved back with my parents 
because they lived in Canada. I moved in with them and stayed in Canada for 10 years, and that was in 1994. No, 1984. I lived in Michigan for 19, in 1983 from Florida and um, moved in with my parents in 1984, and then I moved back to Michigan in 1994. So where I am now in my apartment is Fort Ure, Michigan. So that's the story, the boom, the cows, um, my travels. Um, uh, I did go, again, traveling later on, living in my apartment here, um, going to uh, uh, a Caribbean cruise, and then um, uh, going to um, uh, first to Mackinac Island, uh, and then going on a, a Caribbean cruise, and then um, San Antonio, Texas, and then uh, flying there too, um, and then driving to Mackinac Island. Um, and then uh, th that was, let's see, uh, Mackinac Island was 1998, I think it was, yeah. Um, and then I traveled to, um, in uh, 2004, to Caribbean Cruise. And then, um, let's see, uh, 2005 to San Antonio, Texas, and then and then 2007 to uh, Alaska, a 10-day tour, a tour bus crew, uh, uh, coach tour, and then um, traveling to uh, uh, Mackinac City this time with my mom and uh, my former boyfriend. We would travel up to uh, Mackinac City. We went to um, Whitefish Point, went across the Mackinac Bridge to Whitefish Point, and then came back um, across the bridge. Um, we went back to Mackinac again, but not up to Whitefish Point. Uh, we were there, we took like two weeks to travel from, we went from, let's say, here's Michigan here, and Fort Yern is right, that's the thumb, right here, and then, uh, Let's see, um, we traveled, I drove, I drove the whole time in my 2007 Ford Focus hatchback, five-door hatchback, silver color, and then we traveled around the, up to Point Austin, and then uh, around La uh, Lake Huron, the Lake Huron um, side of Michigan, up to Mackinac City, and then we went up to over the Mackinac Bridge. The Mackinac Bridge was built in 1957. That was the year my, my sister was born. My dad always wanted to take mom to Mackinac over the Mackinac Bridge, and he never got to. So uh, they crossed the Blue Water Bridge so many times. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, he, but he did want to take mom to the Mackinac Bridge, but and not, yeah, Mackinac Bridge. So we went to um, Whitefish Point, uh, and then uh, we came came back to Mackinac City, and then we went on the lake, around Lake Michigan, around Lake Michigan, and uh, went to um, uh, Silver, what's it called, um, Silver Lake, um, and stayed there, um, and uh, that's the Michigan side, or Lake Michigan side. Um, Silver Lake Dunes we stayed at, and um, then we went down to Muskegon and cut, cut across to um, Brown City, and then came back to Port Huron. So, um, let's see, here's the thumb. Po uh, Point Austin, we stopped on the way up to Mackinac. So it was a nice two-week two -week drive. Uh, Mom enjoyed it. She was in the back seat the whole time. And I did all the driving, and um, it was company for her to have my former boyfriend with us, too, um, because, you know, they'd take walks on the beach um, there at Mackinac, um, and I I would stay in the, in the hotel room um, and sometimes. And then uh, Mom always loves to walk the beach because she lived at her cottage on Upper Wash Beach in Ontario, Canada, in Lake Huron. Um, you know, uh, if, since the 1960s, my parents 
bought the cottage there before they winterized it when my dad retired from Chrysler in 1975. So they had a cottage there since the 1960s, but we used to travel over there um, before that to my, my uncle, Floyd Rumford. He was the mayor of Forest, Ontario, Canada. And he, um, uh, uh, my dad and mom had their honeymoon there. They got married in Detroit at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Detroit, uh, St. Mary's of Redford uh, in 1952. Um, my mom came over from England in uh, or England from Ireland because she's born in Dublin, Ireland. She came over from uh, but lived in England during the whole World War II. Um, and she, her brother, oldest brother, got her a, um, a, a ticket, airline ticket. So she came over and stayed with my aunt, her sister, um, and until uh, she got a place of her own. She met my dad. So 1949. Uh, she flew from uh, coming over from England or Ireland, wherever the airport was that she flew out of. And um, she uh, went to Canada, I think, uh, because that my dad went over to Canada. That would be across the uh, Ambassador Bridge or Windsor Tunnel. And uh, so um, uh, I, I think she might landed in Canada first and then came over to the States. But um, they got married in 52, and then they dad retired in 75, factory worker in Chrysler. And then he um, and my mom uh, retired at their cottage at White Cliffs on uh, Ipawash Beach uh, in 1975. And then um, she um, and my dad uh, lived there till my dad passed away in 1990. And then uh, my mom passed away in 2015. Um, but she was living in a nursing home and, uh, before she passed away. So, um, when she passed away. So, uh, uh, that was in 2015. So that's not too long ago. It's only what, 2001 now. So it's only six years ago. Um, and she was 95 and dad was 75 when he passed away in 1990. So, um, uh, but I came back to Michigan from Fort, from Ipper Wash Beach in 1994, and I got my apartment here in 1994, or 95, I should say. Um, but I came back here to uh, Michigan in 1993, um, later part of around Thanksgiving, and then I got my apartment here in 1995, and I've been here since then, and today is uh, uh, Wednesday. October 13th, 2021. And uh, right now it's going on 9.26 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm going to make this short because it's going on 22, 23 minutes now. Um, the first video I did, um, I was doing my map and I was saying Lake Michigan was here. <laughs> it, was, it was over here. So I had to redo the video again. So want to get that right. And I forgot to say it was October 13th. So um, but that's a story I was I was wanted to tell. Here's here's a wedding picture. Well, I'll show the picture of my husband, late husband. This was uh, him and I in uh, Richard Joseph Toucher in Hawaii, in Oahu, Hawaii, 1975, before uh, we got married. Um, and uh, uh I met him in, in Detroit in 1973, and this was in 1975, and we didn't get married until at the Little White Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas, Nevada, on um, uh, Mother's Day on Sunday, May 8th, 1977. Um, we got married, and that's his brother, his brother, and his sister-in-law, and me, and I was going to wear my white dress. I had a white dress I was going to wear, but I wore it for my mom and dad's in the same year, 1977, their um, uh, 25th wedding anniversary. I wore the dress that at, you know, when we went to dinner um, then, and I didn't wear it to get, when I got married. I, I decided to wear my pantsuit uh, in, in when I got married. So that's what I did. I, I was going to wear the white dress, and I ended up didn't. I, I just didn't. I brought it with me, but I didn't, you know, uh, it's a short dress, so my knees and that, but it was like a, a, a strap, strap dress, you know, it was uh, really 
made of cotton. It's all white. My sister, my mom's wet, and my mom's uh, and dad's 25th wedding anniversary. My sister wore the same dress, almost the same dress, the white dress, all white. And we had our pit, uh, professional pr picture taken of us. Uh, my husband was in one picture with us and with mom and dad and, and my uh, uh, sister's first husband was with us and his picture was taken with us and mom and dad. I don't have a picture. This is the only picture and another picture, just me and my husband. Um, but um, I, thought, I thought I'd show you this picture, but uh, a dress I'm not wearing. Um, but anyways, um, that's the 1970s. So uh, yeah, I did a lot of traveling in my 20s and 1970s because my date, my husband, and uh, when we got married, we traveled. But in 1980, when I went to England, Ireland, um, that was the last time I flew until I moved to Port Huron and then went to the other places I, I told you too about Caribbean cruise and the uh, driving up to Mackinac and uh, flying to San Antonio, Texas and um, uh, flying to Alaska. So dad served in Alaska in 1940, uh, 1941 to 1945 when the war ended, World War II, and he was in the army. So um, Anyways, uh, I'm glad I got to go see where dad was at, stationed, or actually the country, or the, not the country, back then it was territory, it was, you know, uh, not the United States then, um, but uh, it was during World War II, now it's a state, so, you know, same with Hawaii. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I'll say goodbye, this is getting to be a long video, it's, all, it's almost 30 minutes, half an hour. <laughs> I don't think I ever did a half hour video before. It's the first time. So anyways, I want to talk about my experience with uh, driving uh, on the left side of the road and the cow jumping over the hedge, you know, and then, you know, a tall land above the road and two lane road. And we we're going about 25 miles an hour and about the boom down in Florida. That was 1980. And then the boom down in Florida in 1981. I think it was 1981 because it came. It happened before that 1982 movie came out with Clint Eastwood. So, so that's it. Um, have a good night. Take care.